Dr. Frank Islam, welcome to IndiaTomorrow.net. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself? Okay, well, first of all, I'm deeply grateful for your kindness and generosity and to interview me to have this uh, constructive conversation. Uh, my name is uh, Frank Islam, and uh, I'm the chairman and CEO of my own investment company. And before that, I own and managed and built a large information technology company, which is called QSS, for several hundred million dollars. I sold it in 2007. And then I have a foundation, which, is, which carries my name and my wife's name, which uh, focuses on, on policy and also providing the scholarship to the students who have financial hardship, as well as uh, the policy issues. Uh, in addition to that, I serve, uh, appointed by the President Obama and by the White House, on the Board of Trustees of the Kennedy Center. As you know, the Kennedy Center is a temple of art. At, uh, President Kennedy once said, the art nourishes the roots of our culture. Um, he said it very eloquently. I also serve on the International Advisory Board of U.S. Institute of Peace. I also serve on the uh, U.S. Star Department of Commerce Board. It's called International Trade Advisory Committee. I also served on Export Import Bank uh, on the Board of Advisory. In addition to all these uh, activities that I'm engaged and involved, I also serve about a dozen university board, which, is, uh, which includes the American University in Dubai, and also University in Malaysia, University in Afghanistan, American University, and also American University in Washington, D.C., George Washington University, George Mason University, University of Maryland, and, uh, and many other uh, what I consider the institutions of the higher learning. In addition to that, I write uh, columns on politics and business in Huffington Post, as well as I, write I used to write and I still write a columns in Economic Times of India. Uh, in addition to that, I wrote two books. One was just published not too long ago called Pivot Point, which analyzes the America's conditions and what we have to do to move America forward. Before that, I wrote a Another book called Renewing the American Dream. I consider myself a, an example of American Dream. So it was a wonderful for me to write a book uh, about American Dream. So there's a little bit about a short background in, in terms of uh, who I am. Dr. Frank, you have written a great story of success. In fact, you were born in Azamgarh in 1953. But from your, your journey starts from Azamgarh to Aligarh to America. Could you tell us about your success saga? Okay. Well, that's a very good question, Mumtaz. As a matter of fact, I always say from the dusty street of Azamgarh to Aligarh to America, I crossed the ocean to realize and to achieve, to attain American dream. So I was born in Azamgarh, and after that I went to Aligarh Muslim University, which is a great institution, an institution that inspired me, an institution that uh, was built by Sir Syed Ahmad Khan, and an institution that has uh, been a part, an indispensable part of my life, my story, my journey, and my destiny. So after, um, and I attended the Aligarh Muslim University, and I left Aligarh Muslim University at a very young age to go to the University of Colorado in Boulder. And I graduated from that. And Boulder is a breathtaking, it's a wonderful school. Uh, after I graduated, I worked for a couple of information technology companies. And I always had this uh, desire and the drive and the dream that I want to become an entrepreneur, I want to be a business owner, I want to inspire others by my story, and that, that has been my fondest hope and expectation is, was, and continues to be. So I became an entrepreneur. So I started my business in 1994. And there was a dark and desperate days of my life with only $500 that I invested into this company. With no insurance, no place to go, no, what I consider I thought there was a future, otherwise that would never start it. So I, I was willing to take the risk, and I always believe in taking a risk. I always believe that the, you have to confirm, you have to confront the uncertainty with optimism, ingenuity, and creativity. And starting a business is about taking a risk. It's about venturing into the new horizon and experimenting the environment. With the hard work initiative, with my uh, uh, staff, I was able to grow the company from one employee to several thousand employees in 13 years, and also several hundred million dollars. It is, it is a true American success story. Then in 2007, I sold the business to, to Pro Systems Corporations, 
for several hundred million dollars. And after I sold the business, I wanted to do something else in my life. That was the next plateau in my journey. The next part of my journey was I, I realized that the success is in business is team sport. It's not I who made it happen. It's many, 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 many people, my friends, my family, my professors, my colleagues, they all contributed to my success. And therefore, it was important for me that they have provided the latter opportunity, which is America. It is time for me to give back and also to share. So I created the foundation to do that. And I was reminded and guided by the phrase, as President John F. Kennedy said many times, to whom much is given, much is expected. So my foundation helps a lot of students to go to school who have financial hardship. And if someone is listening to me, and I will tell them that you need to aim high, you need to work hard, you pursue your dream. I came from a very middle class and humble beginning from Azamgarh as a Muslim family. It was, and I see the young people looking, uh, looking at me and say, can they make it? Yes. You can make impossible as a possible. You can make irrelevant as irrelevant. You can make unacceptable as acceptable. So after I sold the business, after I created the foundations, I started working uh, with President Obama's uh, campaign as, as, a, as a person who was in, well, that I was involved in the national finance campaign. And I got involved into politics. The politics is a design the landscape of America. This is how the capitalism grows, this a democracy flourishes. And, and this is how you have a voice. And, and, and the, those voices that should be heard, and therefore you have a seat on the table which is very important. And I, I tell the people, the young generation, that the, you need to engage. Not only you have to get education, you have to also engage in political activity so you have a voice and as well as you have a seat on the table. And then I got all these appointments. And so my journey, I would hope that people will be inspired by my journey. It also shows the America's inclusiveness and openness. And these are the strengths and the qualities that we can all proudly and truly embrace. I know that the, that the, that the Muslim, young Muslim generation confront hostility and open prejudice because who they are. They see a dark and desperate world. They share a city but not a community. They share a common dwelling but not in a common effort. They share a common fear. But all of us in this country, Hindus and Muslims or anyone, uh, any other, what I consider the religion or race, we live together in a peace and harmony for one thousandth of a year. We should set aside our differences to work for shared goals with shared responsibility and shared sacrifices. So I tell the Muslim youth and all of them, get education, become an entrepreneur, give back to your community and your country, and, and be inspired by my story. Right. So, so that, is, that is an important aspect, and I would hope that people will follow my footsteps because Mumtaz, you and I will be gone. These young generation, these young people will, will hopefully will have the strength and the courage to continue on. They have enormous responsibility on, this, on their shoulders. So my responsibility to create the next generations, to invest in them, because the other generation invested in me and, and become a, what I consider a mentor and become an inspiration for them so that, so that they can also inspire the others and that, that will make what I consider sustainable. My investment was sustainable as well right. because of that. Uh, Dr. Frank, you and I think uh, hundreds of other members of Indian diaspora in the US, they have contributed immensely for the development of America. Uh, now, because you belong to Azamgarh and India, uh, what are you, in fact, I have come to know that you are doing some great job in Azamgarh in, uh, for education of the local people. What's your plan for next 10 years? Well, <laughs> my, 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 my plan is uh, what I consider to create the next generations and also inspire others and also establish the, uh, what I consider this school in, a, in a small villages in the town where the people have no hope. And I wanted to become the voice for those who are voiceless. I want to become the hope for those who are hopeless. So, it is, so that's the reason I believe that the, a Muslim youth, if I have to give them advice, I say get a good education. And I know the poor, the poverty drains institution, poverty crushes the hope of the people, but it's education which is a powerful equalizer that uplifts the people's soul and gives them dignity and respect. Education creates wealth, 
education builds pros education creates prosperity. In addition to that, as President Obama said, education will be the currency of the 21st century. And education, what I consider, frees the human mind from the shackles of ignorance. So going back to your question from Azamgarh, I established uh, this, uh, uh, what I consider a small, it is a, sort of a small uh, a school in the memory of my mother. I always cherish and nourish and nurture my, my family. My family's finest tradition is a sharing and caring. My, my parents instill in me the love of education, and I owe them a sense of gratitude. What is, in, what is best in me, I owe it to the, my parents. There's not a day that goes by that I do not mourn the passing of my parents. They were the best and brightest of all. So when I left India, my mother, my mother said to me that you will have more opportunity than I have ever in my life. She wiped the tears in my father's eye. My father knelt and prayed to Almighty God and said, God is great. God has given the hope and opportunity. Let's welcome the light of the learning. Let the light of the learning penetrate deep into the darkness and light of the whole world. What a best quotations. And that is still, I still remember those quotations that my father said. He obviously said in Urdu, which I translated that in English. Unfortunately, the challenge that we face here in India is somewhat very dysfunctional society. Uh, a lot of corruptions here. <clears throat> and people do not want to take the responsibility on their shoulder that to build this institution. And I'm building the institution for them. Sir Siyad Ahmad Khan built Aligarh Muslim University, and we all went to Aligarh Muslim University. We are deeply grateful what he did for our country and for me, and for many, many generations to come. come. Unfortunately, I have still not been able, I put the foundations, I have not been able to build it because of the fact that the, I have not found anybody who can manage it and who can say, I will take the responsibility, who can give me the five-year plan, how much it's going to cost, what it will take to sustain it, what it will take to maintain it. I'm still waiting for that. And what I'd like to do is build a high school, build a college, and I have a, a hopefully I have a wisdom and a wealth, and I'm willing to share, willing to give, willing to give back to our community, our country, who has given me so much. Now, as far as Aligarh Muslim University is concerned, I give uh, money to the, to, to the students who come from Azamgarh so they can go to school, and they can realize the dream that I have realized, because if my parents and someone else have not invested in me, I would not be sitting here on this seat and having an interview with you. So I would like them to understand and, to, and, and see the hope and aspirations and dreams. I was able to inspire by my parents. I want them to be inspired by my story. Right. Uh, Dr. Frank, you have done a great job in the U.S., in the United States. Uh, uh, you got great success in the United States. You contributed immensely for the development of the United States. Don't you think uh, India needs a Frank Islam now? Well, India needs a many, many Frank Islam, just not the one Frank Islam. <coughs> Excuse me. I have contributed uh, to, to America because it has provided me the opportunities. And my fondest hope and expectation has always been and continues to be that I invest back in America because they have provided me the opportunity. But I have not forgotten my, my homeland, which is India and Aligarh and Azamgarh. I know it is a difficult for a young Muslim youth because they do see a dark and desperate world that how they will be able to get the education to be and also realize their dream. And I want them to realize their dream. And I will do everything possible to make that happen. So in, 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 for me, I did invest in India. However, I did not do very well in investment in India because, the, because of many, many reasons. And India is an emerging market. Our relationship with the United States is wonderful. Our bilateral trade relationship is, uh, is, a, is, a, is a lot more than it used to be 10 years ago. And I think that the, both uh, countries um, have a shared interest because both uh, are beacon uh, of hope 
as well as what I consider the beacon of democracy and diversity, which I love India because of secularism and, and, and so on and so forth that India has as also the democracy and the freedom, the religious freedoms and so on and so forth. So my desire will be, continues to be, that I would like to do a lot more than I, I have done so far. But I want somebody to take a charge and to say that these are the students that we have trained they have, a, they have also, these students were able to, my help, were able to go to schools, to go to colleges, go to the universities, and so that they can help the others and mentors others. So this investment becomes, becomes what I call a sustainable. Unfortunately, it's not happened. Uh, and I would like to see a little bit more in terms of that engagement and communication between the people that have been helped, the financial help from me. Um, one more, several other things that I have done, which, which I take a lot of pride, I brought several students from Aligarh Muslim University to, to uh, universities in the United States and also were able to get them a job from, uh, so that they can, they can get a training. It is my fondest hope, it is my deepest desire to help those who are so wiseless. It breaks my heart that the conditions they live in, and especially in Azamgar and Aligarh. I want, I want them to have the hope, the aspirations, the dreams. And it is a daunting challenge though. How, and, but I would hope that we can start the journey today and, and we can build from that. If I help one, that means according to you, I created another Frank Islam. So it is much more rewarding for me to give rather than making money. Right. Uh, you, you are success and inspiration personified, in fact. Don't you think there is a need to sell the success story of Dr. Frank Islam uh, to the Indian audience and particularly to the audience of Azamgarh? So Frank Islam should stay for, a, for some time at Azamgarh to inspire the local young generation. Well, I think, I, I think, I think uh, you, have, you have made a very good point, and I should, uh, I, should, uh, I should follow up what you just said to me, that I stay there in Azamgarh and places like Aligarh to inspire people. But it is a daunting challenge, challenge for me to live here because I do have a family, I do have a job back in the United States, and uh, I have been away from this nation, from India for a long, long time, so I still have a problems in terms of the, the uh, environment, in terms of breathing the air, which is a very polluted air. There's nothing wrong with that. That's the way it is, and I have to accept it. So give me some time as, the, as, as it goes by, as, the, as we continue on this path forward, as you continue on this journey, maybe perhaps the next plateau in my journey will be to live there, to engage people. But I would hope that I can also help them from United States. So they can come to the United States and see the world, see the experience. So they can be somebody as well. Uh, last question, Dr. Frank Islam. You are a successful businessman in the United States. You are the part of the administration of Barack Obama. How do you look at the Indo-US relationship? Well, <laughs> we had a little bit of hiccup uh, not too long ago. You probably know you, there was some anger and frustrations uh, um, because the, because what happened in the deputy council general in New York, but I think that the Senator Kerry called the the foreign minister of uh, uh, of India and apologized for that. And I think, uh, but I do not speak on behalf of the administrations. The administration does not speak on my behalf. So what I'm going about to tell you is my own personal view. I I believe firmly believe that the U.S. and India have a shared interest and shared commitment because both, are, both value the democracy and diversity and both want to work together. As a matter of fact, our bilateral trade relationship between India and the United States has increased many, many times over what it used to be five or ten years ago. It's still not as big as China is or Japan is or even the European countries. I'd like to make sure that we continue to have that trade relationship. But it has to be a shared interest, has to be mutual interest on both sides, both side, America and, 
as well as India. I'd like to see that we also uh, broaden and deepen our engagement with India in terms of the education. I think the community colleges plays a very primitive role in creating today's students for tomorrow's job. So when I, when I come over here and I see there's not that many community colleges, not everybody can go to school and learn the and go to colleges and learn the trade. Community colleges, which is a two or three years college degree, they can learn the tools and the trades and so that, so that they can work and, and so, that, so that they can create the next generation and realize the American dream so they have a food on the table and also roof on their head. But that's the one area of education I think uh, we, should, we should work together. The second area I think we should work together is energy. I think that the, I believe, firmly believes that we would like to become a provider for in about two or three years for, the, for your needs of all the energy. We all also like to see some of the uh, um, things that we have not been able to do is in, 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 in the agriculture area. We like, there are a lot of products that you produce and, and they're wonderful. We like to see that you, sell, you send it to the United States. We like to, and I know that uh, India has a close to 300 million, um, the middle class. And the middle class will be the right people that we are targeting so that we can sell our products and services. So I see the brighter horizon. There was some, we endured a little bit of a storm, but it is a lot better. But I will tell you one thing. America, it's just not the American government. It's the American people cherish the, the traditions of the Indian Americans. They think they're hardworking, um, they're, they're family peoples. That is the culture. And, and, and they are very much into science, technology, engineering, math. So I see a lot of brighter horizon. I, see, I think this relationship will not only sustainable, I think it's going to grow, and I'd like to be part of that, and I hope you will be part of that. So we can all work together. But with the power comes responsibility as well. Thank you very much, Dr. Frank Islam, for talking to India tomorrow. Sure. Thank You're you. most welcome. Thank you.